Today we're going to do a very quick review of and then test of the MM1 respirator, so that's Mic Mic 1. And this is a Soviet mask which was issued to tank crewmen and other radio operators. And I'll go over those features now why it was ideal for issuing to tank crews. If you've seen the film The Beast of War, which is sort of an anti-Soviet film, where they've tried to make the Soviet tank crews, what they've actually done is got other masks and glued these sort of voice diaphragm things on to mock up having an MM1 because they didn't actually have one for the film. Now, as far as I'm aware, every single nation in the Warsaw Pact that used T-55, T-72s, etc. used this mask. The reason I can say that is one of the variants I have of this mask came with all the East German issue kit, but an actual MM1 mask whereas others are obviously Soviet issued ones and I'm sure you can order these and find that they come with maybe Polish carry bag or Czech carry bags, things like that as well. So to go over the features, you have two front facing big sort of eye lenses. This means that you can see straight forward into optics as good as possible. Until the SHMS came out, this is the best design the Soviets had done for that. You've got the same voice diaphragm you'd see on later masks like the um, SHMS and PMG-1, PMG-2 or at least variants of PMG-1s, especially PMG-2s, sort of the GP5Ms. Standard mass producible intake and outtake port at the bottom, the same type that would have been used on the GB GP5s or the M41s or the SHMS, any of the good Soviet hood masks use the same kind of design. It uses straps so your ears are free to hear more clearly when using it because obviously you'd wear a tank crewman's helmet on top of it which will demonstrate so you could hear through the earpieces in the crewman's helmet and obviously it's a better mask for that design. From inside you can clearly see the wide lens ends, the Tissot tubes that blow directly onto them in quite a clever design and the voice diaphragm and intake port an exhale valve there. Exhale valve being the big circular one, the intakes are underneath the Tissot tubes there. So all in all a very good mask. It saw about 40 years of service. These entered service somewhere in the 1950s making it quite an early Cold War Soviet mask and was still produced up until the fall of the Soviet Union. Apparently the variations on this was just the straps changed slightly to be improved at some point I don't know if this is an earlier or later generation because it wasn't quite clear looking at the description what really changed apparently rubberization on the straps but anyway I will be testing it with a handy modern 40mm Gost filter from Poland although this is expired it seems to have worked in every other test so if this leaks it will be the mask not the filter let's give it a test now well I now have this sinister looking mask on it was certainly one of the creeper, creepier of the Soviet masks and at some point I am going to do a top 10 creepy mask video and I'm sure this mask is going to make its way in. It doesn't almost feel quite centralised on my head but the seal seems to have worked. Yeah, it's pressurised. Without further ado, let's uh, give it a test and um, try not to smash my hand up on the filter. Right, that should be enough air or so in the room to test it. I saw, um, I haven't got a watch on, so I have the time is two minutes or so. I saw on another video people were asking me, um, why don't I use things like rotten fruit to test? Well, this is simply a better alternative because an aerosol particulate is very small and the activated charcoal in a filter needs to be working to stop it. Because if I'm using something like a, um, just a particulate filter that won't stop it because a particulate filter as I found out through testing uh, still not small enough to stop that so you need activated charcoal to absorb the gas just taking deep breaths and so far I can't smell anything so the mask seems to be working uh, this was a 1960 something model, but in theory if you got one from 1990 something before the collapse of the Soviet Union or the late 80s that should uh, be the best possible model. As of all these masks, make sure you change the filter to something modern don't use the old asbestos ones the Soviets issued. 
But yeah, as you can see, the mask seems to be working really effectively. Um, so it's a creepy, weird design. Ideally, you'd be using sort of a hose set up and a canister. If you're a tank crewman, you technically wouldn't need a mask like this unless you were leaving a tank. Because literally every tank from the 50s, 60s onwards was designed to have filters in the tank so you could drive it through chemical weapons. But no, I'm, I'm pretty sure this mask is working fine. Um, it is a good design. Uh, the only reason these look more retro than things like the GP5s and everything is that they didn't want the hood as far as I'm aware to cover parts of the head. In a moment before I forget I will get the tank crew and mask and put it on after the test just so you can see what this looks like with the tank crew gear on as well. But as you can see that seems to be working absolutely fine. Um, that's going to be interesting, is that going to be like an infinite loop between looking at the viewfinder reflecting that and everything. Anyway. I'll now compromise the seal of the mask to see if I can smell the stuff. <clears throat> yeah. So... The mask works absolutely fine. That's not to say all MM1s would be in a good enough condition to work. But this one certainly does. As I said, these 40mm Goss filters I bought that are more modern are very, very good. So it's worth considering getting these if you want one. As you can see, no real fogging in the mask either. It's a very, very good design. Right, I will now just show you of a tank crewman's hat. So this is how it was meant to be worn with one of these over it. Or maybe it just hung loosely on like that with a mask on, but as you can see, the shape fits around the um, tank helmet. There we go. So you've got your um, MM1 mask with a tank crewman's helmet with the headphones actually over your ears in the tank crewman's helmet so you can be listening to all the instructions and hearing each other voice diaphragming, talking into radio so everybody else can hear you and the mask is a perfect success so there we go Thanks for the request for this mask. Here's the review of the MM review and test of the MM1B respirator, or maybe the first generation. I don't know.